gyro, runway 35, clear for takeoff, that traffic slow approach. And the orange gyro will be departing on the downwind. Gyro, roger. What I've done is I've released the uh, the rotor blades now. They're free spinning. Okay. We're going to go out here. We'll slow down a little bit and uh, engage the pre-rotator. So that implies that there is a lock on it, a brake of some kind. A brake, Most yes. of the time, okay. I've All applied right. the uh, pre-rotator now, and we'll just uh, start our run-up. And I'll just add some throttle. We'll get up to about 200. When I take off, the stick's going to come all the way back into your lap for a second or two. All right. While we gain some rotor speed. Okay, we're going to start our takeoff run. Here we go. All right. Stick's all the way back. Stick full out. Full that throttle. And here comes the nose wheel up. We're going to balance right here for a second, get some rotor speed, and it just lifts off. Yeah, very short takeoff roll there. What do you typically have for a takeoff roll in, uh, well, I don't know, let's say calm conditions? Uh, about 300 feet. 300 feet, okay. Right. Now once I get the uh, airplane, put a little bit of trim in the airplane, it becomes very stable. I okay. can uh, do the takeoff, you hands can see off. see both, uh, both of Bob's hands? There's no one flying the airplane? Well, not quite, but it, uh, it sure looks easy. It's, uh, helicopter guys don't, uh, don't understand that part. <laughs> don't let go! Oh no, don't let go! <laughs> All right, we'll depart the uh, the show pattern here. We'll go out uh, just beyond this little lake up here. Okay. All right. So oh, while we're over this lake, we got a good uh, good idea which direction the wind's blowing. While it will not hover, we can simulate a hover. I guess we've got about a 15 knot wind or so. Yeah. So yeah. let's uh, let's pick out something over here. Get a good landmark to give us a reference when we get over over this side of the pond. And I'll go into some slow flight. All right. And I'm going to kind of peek over your shoulder here. Okay. To look at the instrumentation a little bit. Okay. Wow. Yeah, you're way down there in speed. All right. So. And as I get slow, just like in a fixed wing, you'll come up on the power to maintain your altitude. Okay. In on that airspeed indicator there. Look at that thing down at, uh, oh, I don't know, 25, 26, something like that. Very, very low. And didn't really feel much of anything. It just kind of got slow. Forward motion kind of stopped, but... Uh, now, one thing that people observe, Bob, and I'd love for you to comment on it here, uh, is that the gyro handles wind conditions better than, well, most flying machines that I've been able to watch and uh, be in and so forth. And, uh, uh, well, give me, some, give me your thoughts about how that happens and so forth. All right. Well, we effectively, we've got a 27-foot diameter wing. Okay, so we're fairly short span anyway. Right. So the actual wing is only about 8 inches in cord. So it kind of ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. chops up the... So you're uh, high wing loading. Right. So uh, it kind of chops up the, uh, the thermal to begin with. Uh, the other thing that makes it so stable is the fact that it's what is the rotor speed and, and how does and now it never it, well well does it change I'll have to ask the question I guess uh, generally in level flight it does not the rotor spins as fast as it has to to maintain your level flight for us to change the rotor speed the only way that we're going to be able to do that is to change the weight of the aircraft so if you notice right now we're about 350. Oh yeah, amps. okay. Let me come around here with this camera here. Would you point to that uh, indicator? Okay, so okay. we're 360 or so, 350. Now, okay. uh, for me to change the weight, the easiest thing for me to do, um, I don't want to decrease the, so I will increase the weight of the airplane by making a bank. Ah, okay. And as we make this tight bank turn, Oh yeah. All right, you see the rotor speed go up. Oh and yeah. We've gone up That's to about 400. 400. So that boosted it quite a bit as the so the, the it's kind of a kind of a smart rotor. Yeah, it, it knows uh, stuff <laughs> and it does what it needs to do. And a lot of my students uh, they want to know, you know, the the science behind it and it's confusing <laughs> at first. <laughs> and I just say, look, let's accept the airplane for what it is and then after you learn how to fly it, uh, go back and read about the science. Yeah. So rather than changing angle of attack, it just changes speed. Yes. So what we've done there, uh, just as fast as it increased speed, 
it will decay the speed for anything that is negative when you make the aircraft light. So therefore, any of the negative maneuvers or light in the seat maneuvers are, are dangerous and you could slow the rotor down to a point of no return where you know it, it becomes fatal. And how do you not slow it down? Since it's smart and knows how to speed up, how do you fly normally? Don't uh, don't fly any negative maneuver. But if, like if you jam the stick hard forward, you could cause a problem? Correct. Because now you're going to unload the rotor. And just as fast as we loaded that rotor, uh, it will unload uh, I just see. as okay. quickly. And then you, you're basically kind of taking away the wing. Right. You may not have enough room underneath of you to recover that. I see. Now we can fly, you know, we do fly at 1G normally. Okay. We can fly at 0G. Okay. Okay, so we, do, we just don't want to go into that negative zone. I see. Okay, okay. So getting light is not bad, just getting too light is the problem. Is there a thing like learning how to do stalls or learning how to recover from stalls, yeah. what you're now, really doing? Now one, of the, one of the maneuvers on the, on the practical test is a vertical descent with a recovery. Okay. And we can demonstrate that. Let me, uh, to really demonstrate it, let's go up a little bit higher. Okay. So we'll get up to about 1,200 feet to do this maneuver. And we'll carry it down to about 500. Alrighty. Okay, here we are approaching um, 1,200 feet. And our speed's about 46 here. We're just going to start to slow up now. I'm going to start to come off the throttle a little bit. Okay. Back what I'm going to do throttle. is, yeah, I'm just going to leave a little bit of throttle on so we can maintain uh, positive rudder control. And if you notice our airspeed, okay, yeah, it's just a way down there low again, down down to nearly 20. So right, and now here we are at zero. Wow, and, zero airspeed showing on. And the we airspeed. are going straight down. Oh yeah, right. If I can, uh, hope I'm capturing that with this camera here because we are definitely. It's kind of an eerie feeling to a to a fixed wing or <laughs> or weight shift pilot like I am. This feels. Kind <laughs> strange. So the recovery from this. Recovery is we're just going to lower the nose slightly. Kind of like you'd expect in a fixed right. wing pilot. So Ease that part's pretty natural. Right. And we have two recoveries. And what did we lose there? I can't quite see. Well, we're down to 500 right Okay. Now. So that was a 700 foot of descent during that time. It was not at all exciting. It just, uh, that is not threatening feeling, but it was a uh, eerie feeling. Yeah. If we were to lose the engine here, it's really... It's not that big of a deal. You, you got you, you got do, time. You still become kind of a glider. You're, right. You're not. You, you you've got time to you know take a breath, look around. Um, our best glide speed is so oh, somewhere around 40 or so. That's going to give okay. us the most time in the air. But uh, you know, hey, I kind of like this. Uh, I kind of like this field here where the uh, right there by the cows. Okay. So I'd uh, maneuver around for that. And that field down there that you just pointed at, there's enough room down there to put a landing in. Yeah. Wow. Now we're not going to go all the way down because I don't. I don't want to, you know, uh, zoom the cows off. But we'll maybe we'll go a little bit lower over here in this okay. uh, this this bigger field. Oh, cool. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm setting up for the approach in this big field. And you're gathering a little speed, I see. Right, kind of like you would pull the wing in on your weight shift. Right. I turn into the wind. And we're not going to clear that fence, but uh, we'll power up here. Okay, so it becomes a fairly steep glide angle, but, uh, you know, that wasn't, I didn't find that the least bit threatening as far as, uh, because also you're not going to use up much space once you get to the ground, so you can look for a small field. You can uh, put it on something about the size of a tennis court. Um, wow. As long as there are no, you know, no fences on that tennis court. How long would it take me before I would be solo and then reasonably confident to go fly so uh, on my own, maybe taking passengers? Everybody is different. Um, you will feel comfortable in minutes in this aircraft. Um, to uh, to solo, I'm gonna give you about eight to ten hours on the average. Okay. And uh, you, like I said, you'll be comfortable in minutes. You'll be doing touch and goes in about two hours. Uh, everything else is starting to take advantage of the fact that it's a gyroplane. And we want to fly it like a gyroplane. Uh, there's some differences, you know. And like you notice that that approach is is one of those differences. The uh, 
we've got all kinds of, of approaches. To fly this like an airplane, you can do that in a, a matter of two hours. To fly it like a gyro, I want to give you about eight to ten, you know, at a minimum. Uh, where do you start to become uh, what I'll call at one with the machine? It uh, learning curve is very fast on this. Uh, I was happy at about 15 hours. You know, 25 hours, I was, you know, very confident that I could fly this aircraft. Uh, but it is not a difficult airplane to fly, as I want to give you the stick, and you can find out. Yeah. Right, the stick is yours. Okay. Uh, pedal is not really um, needed a lot, because okay. we don't have any ailerons to, to add that adverse yaw. Okay, so let me see if I steer to the right here. Okay. And I'm not using much rudder to do that, is that correct? Just correct. mostly stick. Yes. And it feels like, I would have said that felt like a little bit of adverse yaw there at first. Now, it can't be that because there wouldn't be any adverse yaw on a rotorcraft, I nope. guess. But, but there was, as I, when I make a turn to the right here, it feels like it goes, the nose goes off to the left slightly, just like I would experience in a fixed wing. Yeah. Uh, but not for the same reason. No, you're, it's it's going to be all torque related. Ah, okay. I'm, I'm upsetting the disc. Correct. Ah, okay. But it feels the same. So as far as learning, well, do what you do in a, in a fixed wing, and it kind of seems to work out the same. Now, I can't tell what I'm doing with speed. I have a feeling I'm slowing down. Am you're I? about 60 knots right here. Okay. Have I been slowing down? Down or have no, I been? Not really. Okay. Stick is speed in this aircraft. Power is altitude. Okay. And so that will give you a new um, a new fondness for that uh, for that fact because at one power setting we could uh, fly at uh, a lot of different speeds anywhere from about wow. 50 to 75 or so. Oh wow. Okay. So let me uh, look over your shoulder here and I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Okay. Just gently. Lowering the nose, just like I'd expect to do. There it is, gone up to 70 now, I see. Okay, now the rudder pedals, let's talk about them for a second. Okay. I mean, I have them, and if I, oops, if I push on the rudder pedals, what's going to happen here? Uh, go ahead and uh, go ahead and push them, you'll, you'll yaw. Oh, okay, all right, there's actually quite a bit of action there. Uh, <laughs> more than you may want, but... Uh, so right now I feel like I I feel like we're kind of going a little bit sideways. We are. Okay. So do I need more right rudder or more you right will, stick? You, you, well, uh, <laughs> you will need you will need to put some uh, some left rudder in, and now you're about balanced there. Okay. Yes. So a slight movement of the yawing action produced by the rudder pedals makes it feel more coordinated to me. Yes. Even if those words may not have. Again, I want to try that speed change thing again. Okay. Let's see, I'm at about uh, 58 or so, it looks like. Just kind of thinking a little okay. faster. Basically just relaxing my hand on the stick because I was probably holding it back. And uh, sure enough, I've done almost no forward motion of the stick. And uh, All right, it's popping up to about 70 now. Huh. Well, that's a very subtle thing, uh, that, that pitching motion on the stick. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, climbing from here, you would not pull the stick back. Is that correct? You'd uh, add power? You'd add power, and yes, you'd pull the stick back. Our, our best, our VY, is going to be about 54 knots. Okay. Add some power. And just pull the nose up until our airspeed gets to about 55, 54 or so. Okay. And that's our climb out. You should have, okay. you, and you have, you have some more power to oh, go. Okay. Yep. Oh, okay. And a little bit of right rudder. And a little bit of right to counter the uh, prop, uh, prop P factor, huh? All right, well, again, the, uh, the stick, the stick forces are negligible. There's, there's hardly any. Well, and your your entire stick movement is you know a very yeah. small circle. Yes, very very small. Definitely. Because you were you know in an airplane, you're moving about a five percent you know section of the wing to change direction. Ah. This you're moving the entire disc, so you only have to move the stick five percent as much.
head without doing much. So we used to say in hang gliders that the real sensitive ones, well, you just think you want to turn left and, and you'll start turning left. Exactly. And if you go throwing the bar around, you're going you're gonna to get a lot more than you bargained for. And that seems to be somewhat the gyro case as well. Now, you know, you, you're really, you know, if you're doing, doing some canyon flying or something like that, all you want to do is you want to slow up. Okay. Okay, so we're pulling nose up. Okay, nose way up. And just kick that rudder over. <laughs> and it kind of turns in its own space here. And yet doesn't give that creepy feeling that a fixed wing does of imminent spin. <laughs> no. Because that, that thing we just did would have felt like a spin to be in a fixed wing. Yep. Or and, one coming on anyway. And I, I think our, our turning radius there was probably, you know, in inches instead of feet. <laughs> <laughs> so flying into a box canyon, a much different animal than a gyro. Correct. In a I fixed mean, wing, that's pretty scary. but uh, Because we can, we can turn this literally, you know, on a dime. And so that's the effect of the prop, the the not, not the rotor now, but the prop blast over the your tri tails there, one of which is a rudder. Correct. And uh, you you got a lot of air passing by there. You kick the rudder, it just it just spins the airplane around. Yeah. Like on a top. Very cool. It, it, yeah, it's it's a fun maneuver to do. Here we're over over this highway. We probably really won't move much out of our own. Top wash there. Now nah, it feels for all the world like I'm sitting on a swivel. What is the, uh, the 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 sound footprint, if that's the right phrase? The Germans are very strict on sound, and they have a regulation of you know uh, how high it is. It, it produces you know much sound, and if you've been on the ground, you you you've heard this. It's a it's a quiet machine. Um, here we're uh, we're at like 4,200 RPM. I can tell you right now, the people on the ground do not even know that we're there. Yeah, not even know. And yeah. so, yeah, okay, let's do that then for a minute. Uh, you're you're on a you're flying across country. We're going to fly up to Orlando now. You want to you want to make as much headway as you can. What kind of speeds will we see? At what kind of RPM would you fly? Okay, it depends on how much gas I want to burn. So I'm going to get this thing up to about 5,200 RPMs or so. Okay. That's a that seems like it's a good um, good range on the engine and let's see what we got here set up it looks like we're going to true out about 85 knots or so 80 knots now i will say that this propeller that we have on there is pitched a little bit on the flat side the the one that galen has up in uh, michigan his will easily do 100 knots. Okay. Uh, he's pitched up a little bit more, but Galen's a, Galen's a little bit thinner than I am. Yes. Uh, uh, far distance. And how far could you go then? I have brought this uh, down from Maryland on several occasions, and uh, we did have the, the, the prop pitched up for uh, speed, and uh, generally I came down here somewhere between 95 knots and 100 knots the entire way. Uh, I made uh, three fuel stops. It's 880 nautical miles from uh, our airport to this airport and it took me just a little over 10 hours mostly because I had some headwind. Fuel burn are you seeing? Uh, that's right around 5 gallons an hour. Well, it's, it's a very comfortable aircraft to be in. About this yet, I might like a little more leg room back here, but I guess I probably could stick my legs out further if I needed to. Uh, but in the front seat, uh, well, describe the comfort up there for me. It's good. I, you know, like I said, I can uh, I can fly this for uh, you know a good three hour leg or so. Um, it's you know it's not uh, it's not the airplane. It's it's me that needs to uh, get out and defuel. How much time do we spend on the kit? Uh, you you can, if you come to one of the build centers and get the builder's assistance, uh, we can uh, get you in on Monday morning with you and a friend, and most likely you'll be test flying your aircraft on Friday. Wow, okay, so one week if you're kind of dedicated, got a little bit of extra hands to help, huh? Yeah, it's, a, it's about an 80 hour, 80 man hour build under most circumstances, wow. depending on the equipment uh, that you select. And uh, I think we can go back and let's, uh, let's see how she lands, Bob. Okay. It's been very educational for me. I hope it is for our viewers as well. I suspect it will be. And uh, I think I need to do some more gyro flying. <laughs> well, approach like uh, uh, this will be a normal approach. 
uh, with wind blowing, I'll just have a little bit of power on. Uh, we won't do, you know, a powered off approach or anything like that. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a little more work. This would be a typical normal landing. Okay. What I've been noticing, by the way, peeking over your shoulder at the altimeter. We've been under a thousand most of the time. It doesn't feel weird or scary at all. In fact, it feels kind of cool because I can see stuff a lot better. Uh, do gyro pilots tend to fly around lower? Yes. It's, you know, our safety factor at flying at 1,000 feet is, uh, it's kind of like flying your fixed wing at 7,000 feet. Yeah, you got landings everywhere yeah. for what you need. Speaking of that, can you, what kind of panel instrumentation can you order? Uh, anything from uh, basic analog gauges to Dynon sky views. And they do stuff that's uh, relative to gyros as well, I presume? Yes. Okay.